All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Let Me Finish. This is your boy, Dom. This is Greg. And this is the third of the podcast, Antonio. Oh, my gosh. And we have another special guest with us this week. Um, my boo is here with us. Say hello to Memphis, everyone. What's up, everybody? From the infamous Memphis. Yes, we mentioned him, like, multiple times every episode. <laughs> yeah. You, you said he was, like, one of our special guests. Special but, like, guests. to you, he's the most special guest the, we could have. The mm-hmm. most special guest. I'm glad Aww. you said that because I am. Right? <laughs> Even though he was very upset about not um, being on here sooner, he was kind of jealous of our other two guests that we had. I didn't say oh, that. Okay. That's not what I said. Instead of telling us about yourself, because everybody knows about you, why don't you... <laughs> I think you probably got to make some like disclaimers of things that you have been. You feel like you've been maybe misrepresented on the pod. Uh, this is your time to air your grievances. Listen, I mean, we thank you, Greg. I, I, I really appreciate that. that I episode. really appreciate that, Greg. Yeah. Start off hot. Definitely how I steal dumb <laughs> snacks. That's not true. He made it seem like I just come in and take his snacks, and he don't touch none of my snacks. And that's just not true. That's not true at all. Let me tell y'all what happened with the beef jerky situation. Okay. We were at the grocery store, and he picked up this specific teriyaki beef jerky, and then he was like, I don't think I like this kind. So he set it down, and I was like, no, I'll take it. And then he picked up these sausage beef jerkies, and then I go in the cabinet, eat the beef jerky, and like, why are you touching my beef jerky? And the I'm sausage like, beef jerky. No, not the... I was touching the teriyaki beef you jerky. You dumb. You didn't even tell us this part. No, you did First of all, we're not going to act like this one experience with beef jerky is just a one-time thing. Okay. We definitely purchased... don't have enough time for like I have to air <laughs> all your... I'm just going to say I purchased beef jerky on multiple occasions in... Uh, Next time I know he he it's lower than it was before when I went in there. So he's definitely just putting up a front for for everyone out there. But you know, back to the podcast. This is our ad for better help. <laughs> yes, seek therapy if you have a lot of beef, jer- okay. beef, beef, beef jerky, jerky beef. Issues. Yes. Oh, that was a good one. Thank you. Well, how's the week been for you guys? What's been going on? Uh, I, there's always like the biggest pause for that question. Yeah, um, I kind of started last week, so why don't you start? Greg? Oh, okay. I mean, we're recording on a Tuesday. I can say the day, right? Yeah. Um, and we had a good weekend last weekend. It was kind of relaxing. Um, I need a vacation. I'm going to see my family. My niece's ninth birthday. Told you he'd be traveling, but he'd be gone. Yep, going to San Antonio. So that's about it. Just trying to work to the weekend. My boss kind of laid a um, real egg on me today. Was just like put me on an email with like five people and was like basically saying I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So. Oh. oh. Anyways, how would y'all say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a pretty, I mean, decent week so far. Um, I had a great weekend. We did a lot this past weekend. We went to Cidercade and played some arcade games, so that was a lot of fun. It was. Um, mm-hmm. I had volleyball, of course, on Friday nights, and Memphis actually came to support me for the first time for all what? season. Um, just throwing that out there. And then uh, um, Saturday night, we went to a little birthday gathering, so that was a lot of fun. And then Sunday, we had a little chill night. And tomorrow we're actually going to a concert, so we're going to see Chloe Bailey when she's here in Dallas, and hopefully it's a good show. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good show, so it's been a great week so far. Wow. Yeah, that's actually the most you've ever said you've done like on a recap, so I'm actually proud of you, because I was getting ready to say you're about to cap about something, but mm-hmm. I was actually going to ask Memphis what y'all did, because... You be lying. So. I don't be telling them nothing. <laughs> yeah, like that. So I'm actually proud of the, you know, you actually telling us like a full like recap. Was, yeah. That was kind of nice. We yeah. got the itinerary. Whatever. Yeah, we get the little brief summary. Uh, so yeah, of course, we all hung out during the weekend. Uh, we did Cidercade on Saturday. That was Explain fire. Explain Cidercade to everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Cidercade is in Dallas. Um, it's like a basically, you pay to get in 10 bucks. It's a bunch of arcades. A lot of them are retro, but a lot of them are like, there's some current games and your typical basketball stuff and throwing football and Ninja Turtles and stuff like that, but uh, they only sell cider beers. Yeah, I think they, they didn't have any cocktails, but just no, just cider. And yeah. I was all about the cider too until I got like mad ass and reflux. I think I threw up in my mouth then. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. TMI. Yeah, very, very much TMI. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, the cider cake was fun. Sunday, I went uh, to the gym. I went biking for about an hour with a buddy of mine, and I went to I went to the Fort Worth. No, I'm sorry, I just lied. I went to the gym, and then I went to the Fort Worth Art Festival on Sunday, and also art festivals aren't that fun in the first place, but also <laughs> when it's like rainy, wet, and like 57 degrees, yeah. it's also not fun. Oh, definitely not, no. Yeah, I got dehydrated, my fingers started hurting, and it was just kind of mm-hmm. trash. Did you, you know see what's any cool art? Yeah, what happened? Did you see any cool art? 
honestly, I was so irritated. Miserable. I just didn't care. Oh. And my friend was talking to all the artists. I'm just sitting like, I'm just trying to go. But it was, it was all right. It was all right. You know what's also not fun? Eating dinner, pizza, to say, outside <laughs> on a patio when it's 50 degrees and wind is blowing. Oh, we everybody all... Everybody is wearing t-shirts. We all left that out of the you weekend. You jacket on. You were fine. I was extremely cold. Everybody in my life knows I'm anemic and I get cold I don't think easily. anybody on the pod knows you're anemic. Well, they know now. Dominique does not like to be cold, so... That's not you know, the same thing as anemic. He don't like anything <laughs> under 80 degrees, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm a warm baby. I would also like to defend myself. Yes. I just got attacked again. And I, I love it. Let's that. keep it going. How did you get attacked Wait, you, you attacked me because you said... Uh, you didn't have to mention that I was my first time coming. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the number <laughs> of support with. for everybody listening to the podcast, the number of support is not important. It just... As long as you support... If y'all, Listen, okay, disclaimer. <laughs> it's it's hard for me to get into volleyball because I don't really understand what be going on. Okay, um, I'll be clapping for the wrong team, and and then they just look at me. I'm like, look, I'm supporting everybody. Okay, it just it just is what it is. But I love you, and I'm, you know, I, I'll come to more games next season. I appreciate it. You came to more than my friends have come to, which Ooh. is thank you. Oh, man. So now we're getting shots. You, oh you know? man! In, in my defense, <laughs> I don't really understand volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, Jeez. we haven't formally, like, technically been invited, so that's oh, my opinion. Wow. Whatever. I we don't know what time you play. We don't know where you play at. We yeah, you've never given us details. Yeah, we don't know. But did y'all ask, though? Um, I mean, that's not the point, though. <laughs> See? Hey, See? but it's always like, hey, Dom, do you want to do something? I can't. I have volleyball. And then the conversation you know the conversation right. always ends there. It's never like, oh, you can we come, come. here and it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm playing Friday night at 830. At yeah. Blo- it never happened. So, yeah. You're right. Whatever. Give us a chance. So let's jump into the Great topic time. that we're going to be speaking about um, this week. <laughs> Sorry. We have a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about religion, guys. Religion in all aspects in our experience with this subject. Before, um, just to jump into everything, I guess we should start off by saying, what, are our, what, are, what is your overall thought when it comes to religion? Uh, it's good for people, I think. It's not good for everyone. Mm-hmm. I believe it, but I don't practice it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm forgiven, but I don't act like it. Wow, bars. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, I think you kind of, <laughs> I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there for a lot. I think I agree. I think it is good for some people. I think depending on what the religion is or what you practice, it is it can be good for you and. I think it's important in a sense, depending on, once again, how much of it you do and how much of it you practice. Um, it could be very therapeutic for some people out there. So, yeah, that's my overall opinion. What you got? So, for me in a religion, um, it's I've had a complicated relationship with it. Not for any personal reasons or something that happened. It's just more... As I've gotten older and come into more of who I am and the way I think and process, I don't fully understand it. I think for some people, it can be good. So I'm going to kind of re- rehash what you guys said. It can be good for some people. Um, it can have its negatives. It can be a crutch for some. It can be a positive for others. So I'm just kind of in this weird place with it where I'm not religious. We'll mm-hmm. keep it at that. But I can see it being a thing for certain people and how it helps and how it hurts in other ways. Yeah. Kind of to piggyback on what Antonio said, uh, I grew up Church of God in Christ. Everybody, almost everybody in my family are ordained ministers, so it was kind of birthing to me. But my perspective about it as I grew up and watched it and experienced religion on my own, um, especially in a black gay man, definitely changed. I'm still extremely religious, extremely spiritual. I love God. I believe in God. Um, but certain aspects of the church, uh, not so much so, yeah. uh, my family does a, a family prayer every Monday, 6 30 PM. So, you know, we're, we're a deeply religious family. We love God, but my, mm, my personal experience, just a little different than what they believe. Yeah. And I'm excited to dive into this topic because I think we all have different, you know, aspects and, and opinions on what it means to be religious so 
looking back, did you all have a, a religious upbringing? I think we all did, honestly. I'm looking, looking around at us, and I think well, we all did. I mean, you're, you were parents were like in the yeah, uh, yeah. deacons or something. Yeah, my dad's a deacon, and my parents have, I, I grew up Baptist, and I was a part of the church my whole childhood. I went to church every single Sunday up until I was 18. And um, yeah, I was very involved with church. I was the superintendent of Sunday school. And wow, was, that's yeah, next level. I was part of the um, Usher board because my mom was the president of the junior Usher board. I played the drums for my church. I so played guitar, I, I think. Was, I was part of the choir in a sense. And I was just heavily involved in, you know, when you're a youth in, in a Baptist church, they rely on you a lot to do a lot of stuff and take on a lot of responsibilities. And it was it was a, a burden in, in a sense, but that's all I knew growing up. So, yeah, that was my upbringing. Wow. Yeah. And Antonio, you grew up kind of not all in like that, but um, what what's the denomination? So, so uh, I don't want to say I grew up this, but... Um, my family, my mother and sister were Seventh Day Adventists, which is just Christian based, which means that they observed the Sabbath on uh, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Um, I didn't grow up like from day one like that. Um, actually, it was a neighbor who got my sister into it, and then my sister got my mom into it, and then at the time, I think I was like nine, oh okay, eight years mm -hmm. old. So by proximity, obviously, my my mother started taking us to church. So my history in religion is kind of started short but simple. From the ages of 10 to 15, my mother took us to church. And somewhere around 15, 16, my mother just said, hey, you know what? I think you guys are old enough. I'm going to let you make the decision. Do you, do you want to keep going or not? And I think uh, I kept, I went for maybe another year and I stopped going. But outside of like going to church every Saturday, um, we didn't have to do a lot of different activities. I wasn't a part of anything. You know, we did our, the kids, not Sunday school, Saturday school, whatever. We would do that before the actual service. You know, we did the feet washing, the crackers, the juice, all that stuff. But I didn't really have a lot of activities within the church outside like Dom did. So that's wow. kind of a, you know, okay. base summary of what. Did you, did you like aspects of it? Because obviously, Dom, you liked aspects of it. Yeah, I, I grew up in the church. Everybody, I grew up in a small church too. So it was probably maybe like 70 people, maybe 80 people. That's pretty small for a Baptist church. And I knew everybody, like everybody, that was my church family. That's, you know, I didn't have really friends outside of my church, people that went to my church and the people in my neighborhood. But yeah, like I, those people practically raised me. So I was very heavily involved and I enjoyed it for what it was, you know, but it, it can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. It sounds like you just had so much involvement. Like that was your entire life. Yeah. Whereas for me, it was just Saturday. Um, I didn't enjoy it, to be honest. Like, yeah, I can see you hating it. <laughs> I don't want to like, say I'm imagine you're like washing people's feet or giving them crackers. I I just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I hated washing feet. I just like okay, it's not the act of it. It's just even as a kid at that young age, from 10 to 15, whatever age I was, I just never connected with it. I never got anything out of it. Um, I just felt like it was something I had to do every Saturday, and I just I would sit and listen, and I just. I never connected with it, so that's why I didn't enjoy it. Well, whose feet were you washing? That's the part I'm trying it was to elders. Understand. It was just some old people. I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> I've never heard that before, so yeah, that's no. that's wait, new for wait, me. Hold on, hold on. Oh the no, I've, the feet? I've definitely no. done it. I, no, I went right. on this men's retreat thing, oh. and it was like kind of when I was like lost my way, and my parents, were, my dad was like, "I'll pay you a month of your rent if you'll go on this weekend." Wait, you were an adult? Yeah, I was like. Probably twenty, but I mean, probably not twenty-one yet. Maybe nineteen, twenty. Ask okay. him if he's still willing to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it was. I remember it was like three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, I'll take the three hundred and fifty. Yeah, right. Um, my experience is totally different. Um, I guess from yours, Antonio, because, um, like I said, growing up in it, I didn't have a choice. Yeah, it was one of those things of. If you live in my house, we're going to church on Sunday. Right. And I was extremely heavily involved. Um, my church wasn't a small church. It was a very nice sized church, kind of maybe one of the biggest in Memphis. And we had literally had to be at church at 645 in the morning to work the telephone ministry. And then after that was done, you're going to Sunday school at 730. And then you go on the first Sunday service at 945. 
and then you might go have a little break and then the 11 o'clock service and then after that of course this is what our bishop used to call come back and give god thanks so you come back to church sunday night yeah at seven o'clock so i was i was at church All day. and then of course you had <laughs> you had tuesday night deliverance service then mm -hmm. you had wednesday night bible study then you had friday night fellowship with the men that and, ain't so then, lot. and then you might have to do something saturday I don't know. You might have to do some Saturday, and you're going to church on Sunday. So it's one of those things of if, as a child growing up, you're going to church. If you're yeah. living in this house, you're going to church. I never forget. Um, I think I was maybe 16, 17 at the time, and I thought I was growing out with my friends all night. And my mom told me she was like, "I don't, I don't care what time you come back. You're going to church." And I got back maybe a little bit after midnight, and I was like, "I'm asleep, and she's not gonna bother me." <laughs> She woke me up. It was like at five thirty, and she was like, "You in this house? You either gonna go to church or you getting out this house?" And it was just simple as that. I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Was, and then, especially like I said, my granny is an evangelist, and we was almost late for church one day, and I ain't never seen her drive that fast. I'm like, I never seen her drive that fast. Like, and so, yeah, it was one of those things. And, and you know, I enjoyed it because uh, you know, you grow up with these people too. So as the church got larger, of course, we moved buildings. And so, you know, you get to grow up with these people and it's like, you're on the junior usher board, you're in the junior uh, choir, you're doing this with the men. And it was just, you're always involved. And it's like, people know your family, they know you. Yeah. And then it's one of those things too, is like, when you outside of the church, if I see you doing something, when I see your people, I'm going to tell on you. Yeah. Because really? you know you're not supposed to be doing it. Yeah. You yeah. snitched to the yeah, youth bad. pastor or what? <laughs> no, was, you, we got snitched on. You got really? snitched on, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know. You supposed to pat such and such, ain't it? No, sir. Yes, you are. <laughs> when I see her, I'm going to tell her you. My granny whooped me. This was when we was at a... So my dad's family was Baptist. My mom's family was Koji. And I went to my with church with my grandma and my dad's mom on Sunday. And my cousin and I got there arguing in the, in the church. And my cousin hit me. And so I hear her back. And she hit me back. And then my grandma goes, both of y'all come outside. I need to talk to both of y'all. And I was like, okay, well, she's going to talk to us. She did this, you know, old ladies used to wear the purse strap that you got. Yeah. And she whooped us in front of the church, right there with the purse strap. Wow. And, you know, black church like, I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, amen. Yeah. So, so the church was my life growing up. I did not have a choice. Damn, that's fun, though. Like, a big church, too. Like, my yeah, church was medium-sized, and it was kind of, like, popping for a while. And then people started going to some of the other churches. What's medium-sized? Like, popping. I mean, like, we had, like, Sunday night service. We had Wednesday night service. Like. Wow, we had okay. youth group on Thursday, and then it was just like I think as what I got in high school, it just kind of got like progressively smaller. And like a pastor would leave, or somebody would get mad, or, you know, something like that. And yeah. there's like other mega churches or whatever. But like that sounds actually kind of fun. Yeah, y'all yeah. used to have church lock-ins. Yes, of course. We had that, yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> get me out of here now. <laughs> locked in. Locked How does in. that sound? No, it was you're, just, of... you're just washing feet all night. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was kind of like a, a lock in for us. We just sat around. We had snacks. We would um, have like a Bible study for a moment, and then we would watch different like movies, mm -hmm. religious like, movies. Yeah. Ugh. Or like car like cartoon type yeah. movies. It yeah, was, or like wholesome religious. Cartoons. They were definitely PG. That'd be yeah, great. definitely, yeah. definitely PG. PG. But it was always fun because you were with like all the other youth in the church. In my church, like I said, I, there was a lot of youth at our church, so it probably was like maybe fifteen of us. We all grew up together. So well, let me ask this because Memphis and Dom, you both like were so enthralled in the religion where like it was your life where you mm -hmm. met friends there, but. Greg, did you mention like when you were going to church, were you like friends with all the people and a sense of community with it? Because it seemed like you guys had a sense of community. But... You know, I think there was a difference between having a church friend and having a friend friend. It was like, I rock with this person because we got this like church bond. But like, I remember just like seeing people, you know, in high school and like some would be like not that cool. And I came up with them and some would be like really cool. And it was like weird that hierarchy in high school. I don't think I ever like vibed really hard with people but i did have like ch close church friends where our families would go on trips together and stuff like that you know okay. yeah I, di I didn't have any of that so we just i saw him on saturday then i went home <laughs> or yeah. I, I waited I, or i waited in the car for my mom to talk for like about an hour that's crazy you know like moms be like talking and oh yeah trying to leave oh we about to leave and Absolutely. i never leave so yes no i walked home one time because we didn't live that far from church yeah. and they were just talking too much yeah <laughs> i didn't have that option it was like a 30 minute drive so yeah um, did you guys have any struggles with your sexuality and your beliefs? I think we can all say yes to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think probably so. 
the uh, back of my story of not leaving church at about 16 when I stopped going, I think it took me a good 35 now. That was 20 years ago, I guess. So it took me about a good decade or so to finally like stop feeling that guilt because like even though I got personally further away from that particular religion, I still kind of had that guilt in the back of my head of like, oh, maybe it's not right. And things my mom said and the struggles we had. So it was over a decade to where I still carry like a certain guilt or feeling that I shouldn't be doing this, especially some of the sketchy stuff I did early on because I didn't know any better. I did some sketchy shit. Um, the guilt yeah. is real for sure. Oh, no, no it's real. Shame. Yeah. But like yeah. also that guilt, like they did that all consuming guilt. It makes you do more sketchier shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you're yeah. like, I'm already a sinner. You know what I'm saying? I might but, as well go. I couldn't oh, like I grew up in a small town, so like I couldn't really do anything sketchy or anything besides look at porn. But the the guilt is like you said, definitely real. Like I just remember, like I've been feeling I've I've known I was gay since I was like in the first grade. That's when I first feel like I you know could tell that was I was different. Teacher? No, but I could tell that I was. <laughs> I could tell that I was feeling different than a lot of other people in my class. And ever since then, like, it's something that you don't really, I couldn't really act on it or anything. And then I go to church every Sunday and have to hear about how people who think the way I think are going to hell or, or just shouldn't or sinning, you know, it just, it weighs down on you. And I think that it scared me for a long time to even act on it or do anything because I didn't want to be gay. Like, I really didn't want to be gay. I remember praying, like, in my closet, praying God to not make me gay. Because I was sure. like, I know I feel like I'm doing something bad, but I can't help feeling the way I'm feeling. And I can't talk to anybody about it because they're just going to send me to the pastor or, like, say that something's wrong with me or mm -hmm. send me off somewhere. Like... I was scared to say anything, so I just didn't say anything. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be an adult soon. I'm going to go off to college. I'm going to make that my priority so I can figure out, you know, what if this is really how I'm feeling, you know. And it turns out it was. But in that it moment. Turns, it turns out it very <laughs> much was. It very much was. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I just I just remember just, like, feeling like I was doing something bad, for sure. No, and, I mean, first of all, Brave, all, honestly, we've all overcome something like that. But, like, the way they talked about it in church, if you think back to that time, they talked about, like, there was nothing lower. There was nothing yes. worse. You could, Any sin was above being gay. Gay was the worst thing you could be. Like, yep. you were, like, Satan's, like, best for, henchman or some <laughs> shit. Like, you know? So it's a lot of programming that you have to unprogram yourself, and I don't yeah. think it ever really goes away. No, I agree. Never fully, but you kind of learn to, you know, deal with it. Real quick pivot. Um, did we all try to pray, pray the gay way at some point? Absolutely. I was gonna Absolutely. Say, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I think yesterday. I think we've all, Absolutely. Yeah, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this later. Uh, no, I feel like we've all at some point had that prayer, please God, don't make me gay. I, I remember specifically getting on my knees on my bed and praying, like, don't make me gay. Yeah. And then I try to see it with two women. It didn't work. I'm like, all right, I guess it is what it is. I think that's everybody's story. Where, yeah. you, where you try to pray to gay away and then sleep with a girl. You're like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> right. And then like enlisting the help of other people. Help me pray this out of me. But it's like, you know, it is a it's a huge struggle to to battle yourself yeah. with who you know you are and then what you what you've been taught to believe. Where it's like, well. How does God love me but going to send me to hell because I can't control this? I didn't wake up one day and was like, let me just love a dude. You know, I had my first kiss with a guy. Um, I was in kindergarten. It was some shit that I was watching on TV. So I was like, he did it. Let me do it. And his dad called us and took me home and was like, our ah, son is a kiss. And my mom was like, what you mean? You know what I'm saying? So it was, it's been an eternal struggle. Not anymore. It was an eternal struggle for a very long time. Like, I, I'm in the middle of a relationship, you know, with a guy. It's like, I can't do this. We're going to hell. Both of us, I don't want us to burn in hell. And it's like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. It really it really tore me up for a long time. And then, of course, you know, you call the spiritual warriors of your family. You know, your grandma, your mom, your uncles and all that stuff. And it's like, well, that's just the Lord trying to pull you out of your sin, life of sin. And you, <laughs> ought, you ought to come on out. You know, yeah. the Lord trying to deliver you from being... This and you know homosexuality not right, and you know, like I said, you, it's an internal battle where it's like, well, I didn't choose this. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't choose to love a love of man, and and the piggyback, you know, got like what y'all said. I think the the popular preacher, let me preach about gay. 
if I ain't got nothing else to talk about, yep. I know the church is going to go up with me yeah. if I'm talking about gays. Mm-hmm. And the terrible part about it is, you know, the church is supposed to be a place where, you, where you're where you supposed to come in and feel God's love. And the people who are leading the congregation are supposed to make you feel the love of God so that if you are doing something wrong, if you are convicted about something wrong, it turns your heart. But who wants to come in and sit under somebody saying, you being who you are, you going to hell. You going straight to hell. You going to burn. And like you said, it's like it's no other sin and, you know, he up there fucking three, four women in the church. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you out here sucking a little dick and you you going straight to hell. So it's like, that, that's what my, I had, I had to turn my heart a little bit towards when I was like, let me just focus more so on God than the people inside the church. Because the people inside the church, they going to send me to hell with this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I, I just can't keep going doing this back and forth where it's tearing me up. Where it's like, oh, okay, I'm having spiritual warfare with myself. Whereas... Am I supposed to be doing this against who I really am? Yeah. And mm-hmm. some of the most, uh, I don't think there's any more hypocrites than people that go to church sometimes. No, yeah. Like, they will tell you not to do something and turn around and do it themselves. Do it the same time they tell you not to do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they'll never acknowledge that they're doing something wrong as well. And, and that's the one thing I just, it kind of, I have struggles with going to church now. Because it's like, I feel like maybe there's a church home out there that I can feel comfortable and welcomed into. And I guess since I've heard, I've gone to church so much growing up, it's just kind of like when I had the opportunity to choose if I wanted to go or not, I took the route of just not going anywhere. What age was that? When I went to college. Oh, yeah, I went yeah, to college, yeah, I yeah. didn't have to go. I wasn't living at home. I was away from home. I went to college like... Church a couple times when I went to college. You haven't been to church since college. I have been to church like since on the holidays. College. You don't you don't come back for like Christmas or yeah. Christmas? Whenever I travel home, if I have time, if I'm there long enough, then I'll go home on Sundays. Just because those people are still my church family, yeah. I still grew up with those people, so I will still go. But when I was in college, I only went to church when my fraternity was having like a community service event or something. And that was something that we were doing. I went to church a couple of times for that, but as an adult. Like, since living in Texas, I've probably only been to church maybe three times with uh, one of my friends I used to work with, an ex-co-worker. But other than that, like, I haven't really felt or found a church home that I'm comfortable with to go in because I just, I don't feel like sometimes they're going to be fully accepted. Well, a lot of times that shame, that, that the feeling we're all talking about, like, it hardens and it turns into resentment and, like, anger and, like... You, like people turn away for like really, really explainable like valid reasons. Yeah. Um. So I don't know how do y'all feel about it now. I mean, we've obviously we're in our thirties. You know, we've worked through some of that, or have we? I mean, I'm still. It's still an ongoing process for me. Like, I mean, I would love to find a church here that you know I'm comfortable with, and people are nice and accepting, and I don't have to go and worry about hearing about I'm going to hell because I'm gay. Um, so I'm open to it. I definitely don't have a resentment or anger towards church because my whole family is a church going family. So, well, let me ask this, um, cause I was going to ask before Greg said what he said, but like for me, I don't have any connection with it. Like you guys had church family growing up. So mm-hmm. there's probably a, some type of connection there, but like, are you guys like seeking some type of religion normality or somewhere to go in your current state? Because I'm not, but if are, are you guys seeking that? So, uh, but let me ask you this: like, yeah. what do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever gotten that deep on. Oh, we can go. The bar. No, it's not that deep. It's it's. I don't know. Like, here's the deal: I don't like labels, right? Like, somebody might throw the atheist or agnostic label, and I just I don't even I don't identify with some like. Oh, I'm on this side. I believe this. I just, it's not even, honestly, it's not even a thought in my head anymore. Like, uh-huh. obviously, if something I grew up with, I got away from it. I just, I never connected with it. I don't have a desire to it. Now, the one thing, this is the one thing I will say. The only thing I've ever felt that maybe I will look into is maybe being a um, Buddhism. Um, okay. Because one thing I said earlier is getting away from the establishment of the actual church and just getting into the religious aspect of it yeah. and i i get that because the church structure is flawed right there's extremely extremely yeah. flawed 
Buddhism is the only thing I've looked into, not fully, but that seems like something I'd be into for where I'm at in my play, in, mm-hmm. in my life, where I'm not centered on this aspect of traditional religion or Christianity or whatnot. That's the only thing I've looked into. So to say what I believe in right now, I don't really have anything that I necessarily believe in. Not that I'm just out here like floating around being like, fuck it, but you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, all I can say is Buddhism, is Buddhism is the one thing that at some point in life I'm going to actually look into. Because, Why? Um, because of where I'm at mentally and where I'm at in my life and just how I feel about things. You know, I don't feel like I need to believe in this aspect of God. Because from what I understand of Buddhism, it's more about yourself. Not to be selfish and it's all about me, but it's more about yourself and being centered in the universe and, ha- and finding happiness and peace. That's what I'm into. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, though, uh, I'm I'm kind of on the same spectrum as Dom. If I can find a church that doesn't attempt to judge me for who I am, and I don't have to hide the fact um, that I am in a relationship with another man, I'm mean, you know what I'm saying. I, we don't have to walk in church, hold their hands, and kissing and stuff like that. Right, you, know you can though. I've been to it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, um, just just respect me who I am as as where I am. You know what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm no longer in a place where it's a battle for me, as to where um, I'm struggling with who I am. I'm a proud, happy gay man in a loving, healthy relationship. So I love that aspect of my life. But as far as church is concerned, I don't want to go and sit under somebody, especially in a place where I have to pay my ties to that place, that organization. I'm giving yeah. you my money, and all I gotta hear is about how I'm going to hell because of the life that I live or who I am. That, that that's not gonna fly for me. I, I left the church for that specific reason. And what was crazy, when he wasn't preaching about that, he really was a really good preacher because he had a teacher's background. So he was able to break down the word and divide it as to where I understood it, where it could apply to my life. Mm-hmm. But it was just too much of when he not you know teaching on that is gay, 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 gay. And you yeah. can't. And I'm like I can't. I can't sit under this. Yeah. Right. I can't sit under this by you trying to convict me from who I am. And that's the only thing you got to talk about. You know what I'm saying? At this point, your daughter done had a baby out of wedlock, but she ain't never speaking about that. Right. But it's always mm-hmm. about, oh, I'm gay. Oh, I'm gay. And then, he, you know, they try to make the joke. It's so many alphabet in the thing now. I don't know what to say. Shut the fuck up. I hate, that's that. pretty funny. I hate, I hate those shows. Shut the fuck up. Like, get out of here with all that. Was, yeah. that's a good and, joke. you know, the, the black church is, ah, you know, go up for it. So it's like, nah, you know, I, let me get out of here if I cut y'all out. Yeah. I would say, like, right now, I'm still very spiritual. I still believe that I'm a Christian. That's just what I grew up as. I still have those beliefs. Um, I no longer believe that I'm going to hell because of the lifestyle that I'm living. And it took a a long time for me to, to feel the way that I feel. But I do consider myself still religious. Um, it's just kind of hard because I know that I grew up in a very religious family and it's even hard these days to to tell those people that that I'm gay and because of I knew how I grew up and I don't know how exactly they'll respond to it who knows maybe I'll send them this podcast and they can listen to it and <laughs> have, a, have a reaction to it that way but even though I don't go to church um right now I still consider myself a Christian and I still consider myself religious in a sense I still have that belief in God um, even if I found a church home here, I can't even guarantee that I will go every Sunday. You do volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you couldn't I, be a seven day Adventist. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, Dom can, but I'm not watching nobody feet. I just, no, I just, no, no, it's like once, it's erotic. I've done I, it. It's, it's like once, once every quarter. Once it's, it's like, too many times. I'm not touching no stranger feet. No, bro. No, I hated no, that. I hated that. No, it's just I'm not, um, it's a little weird. I can't say this about your family though. Um, you know, they they are super religious, but when I met them and they they were some of the most accepting people. Now, I don't know if they was putting on the front just because, you know, they didn't want to start no shit while we was there. But they were they were some of the most accepting and, and receptive people I've ever met in my life. Like, didn't make me feel weird. Didn't make us feel weird. They were really good. And I just want to say this for the record on the podcast. Dumb mom is in love with me. She hugged me real tight and told me she loved me. I just want to let y'all know this. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that I makes miss, you feel good. I mean, I'll put that, the, that gives the us hope. In there. I've never had that. So <laughs> that I'm gives sad. me and Antonio hope. Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had that. Ever. No. 
Do you guys have any funny church stories? Oh yeah, no, no. I got one. Um, and I was just I was thinking about it because did y'all go to church camp? Um, we didn't call it church camp per se, but we we did have a type of church camp. But I'll let you tell your story. So like it was like a week long, you know what I'm saying? It was like Monday through Friday, and um, it was fun. But mm-hmm. like um, at the last night, you kind of like give it up all to God, and like a lot of people <laughs> like give their heart to Jesus. You yeah. know what I'm saying? What does mm-hmm. that mean? Give it up to God. I mean, you give well, you give Jesus your heart, and it means yeah. that you're forever saved. You just let it all go. Are you not saved? I don't know. <laughs> Do I you want to get saved in the pod? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically you could, but Wait, what, what, what does um, getting saved mean for for your experience? Getting saved was like the ultimate get out of jail free card. <laughs> Like, you got saved, and no matter what you did from thenceforth, like, you're good. That's because that's, that's what they, that's what the church tells you. Like, you, uh, you, uh, you, you wash away your sins is the language that they would use. And you give your, your life to God and confess your sins, and then you would be saved. So, am I the only one not saved? Because I know... Memphis is saved. You definitely both sound like you were saved. Because I was saved, yeah. Did you do it at church camp? I was saved. I've been saved multiple times. <laughs> oh, yeah. you did it multiple times? Yeah, because I'm like, you know, I like attention. Because like when you get saved, <laughs> everyone's like, you're the hero for the night. You know what I'm saying? You get a lot of like hugs, That's pats true. on the back. Like, Everybody's you're the crying. Yeah, it's, yes. it's a whole experience. All right, okay. so this is going to be a stupid question, right? So for someone that's not been saved, you get dunked in that water... We're having a church. You get baptized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it like a shower somewhere you can take a shower? Whoa. No. Oh my gosh. So, I no, I'm sorry. I just, you grew I up in the South. Oh, Memphis, are you saved? Yes. You're saved. I, I am saved. There's no question about it. I have done the ABCs of accepting Christ. Yes, I am saved. Is there a shower afterwards? No. No, it's just, you no, get dipped no, in a pool. So let me tell you about my experience, Antonio. You're since, talking about baptism, right? Yes. Well, just, that's the same thing, this, right? I mean, well, I mean it's, I'm it's Methodist. Hard. See, it's I'm Methodist, and okay. talking about the ABCs of baptism, we went to a Baptist church. I'm Methodist. We went to a Baptist church, and I was dunked. Yeah. Just to, like, cover my bases, you know? <laughs> so I'm, like, baptized in, like, multiple religions. Wait, wait, wait. So What's let the me, difference? Let me explain it to you. I grew up Baptist, so right. being saved in my church means that they have an altar call, is what they call it, and they would play music. They would put out these chairs in the middle of the, the you know, the floor. And the pastor would say, if anybody has anything on their hearts that they want to come up and confess, then they can do that. So when you're saved, that means that, well, when you're unsaved during that time, Me. you would go whenever your heart, like whenever <laughs> the word spoke to you, whenever God put it on your heart, you would get up. And you would go take a seat in one of those chairs. And then after that, the pastor would come with you with a microphone and say, son, what would you like to say to the to the people? And then for me, little Dominique, I took the microphone and I said, I want everybody to know that I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And he died for my sins and I want to be saved. So you just copy and paste it. Okay, first of all, <laughs> first of all. That, does very, that sounds like chat GPT right there. I was, was going to say that, but I was going to say that, but. But no, but it was a very emotional, your parents are crying, your grandparents are crying, your church family's crying, everybody's excited because they're always excited for, you know, you to be saved. And then probably the next week they have a, a baptism ceremony where you get baptized. So for me, I wore shorts and a, a long white t-shirt and I got in the, the pool with, with the pastor and he'll say what he needs to say and then they'll dunk you in the pool and bring you back up and then you've been baptized. And so chlorine is and then you just blessed you like just, water. Oh my you just go on wet. Just no I mean no, you get you a towel and dry off and tell me oh my god. <laughs> you don't just Leo, go Sorry. ahead. Mine is a little bit different. Like I said um I grew up Kojic, so it's like there were no chairs. Okay, what is Kojic? Can you tell us? Just about that. Church of God in Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Kojic is Church of God in Christ. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I grew up Kojic, so it's like there were no chairs. You know, you the, of course the pastor get an altar call, and you go down there, and you know I want to give my life to Christ, mm-hmm. and they shake your hand, and then of course <clears throat> you go through the ABCs. You accept, believe, and confess. As long as you accept, believe, and confess, you're saved. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, everything you've done up until this point, it don't matter no more. Mm-hmm. God don't care about none of that. 
It's just your journey going forward. And so, like Dom too, it was like you signed up to get baptized, and um, but they gave you an outfit to wear. You had to wear all white. <laughs> Yeah, white socks. Yeah, white pants, white like you was covered. It's very like <laughs> back, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you, and they take you down to the pool and you know say the little speech that they have to say. And you went to a mega church too, so it was probably twenty five people getting baptized <laughs> yeah. during 25. that time. Listen, it was a lot. Did y'all had a church mother sitting on the front row? Did it seem take me to the yeah, water? Take oh, yeah, take me to the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my grandmother was one of those I, that know, was sitting up there too. Yeah. I was and the only person that got baptized that Sunday, so oh, so you the star. Yeah, I mean, I went. I was to a small church, so it's not like it's like graduation in a way. Like you're kinda, walking across that, like kinda, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. And you, you know, uh, at your church, did they do uh, like when you got done with new members orientation class? You did like a little graduation and stuff. Um, new member orientation. We didn't y'all didn't have new no. members orientation. I have been I a member. Been we didn't go through. <laughs> you went through boot camp. <laughs> no, it's like so when you a new member and you join the church. You know, it's a class that you go through a couple of Sundays. I was never a new member. I was born into the church. <laughs> you went to so, the same church. Yeah, I went to the well, same I'm church. Well, I'm saying people that joined your church. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I all, have no idea. All, all have they did no was idea. call us out. Like, if there any new members, they would stand up and like, hey, welcome. And then you sit down. So that's all they did. Nah, if you, if you wanted people, you know, so like when they get an altar call, you know, they call people say, hey, do you want to be saved? Come on down to the altar. They I just got here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like you know, I mean, oh, you were telling, talking about funny church stories. I got a funny church story. So I had I had been to church in a while, and like I said, when the pastor do the altar call, at least in my church, when the pastor did the altar call, they would do, of course, you know, come down to the altar if you want to be saved. Come down to the altar if you want to join our church. You know, you're looking for mm-hmm. a, a new a church, family, home. A, a church home. And then my bishop would do one and say, you know, I'm calling for all the backsliders. You know, you you ain't been in touch with God for a while. And so there's a lot of wives looking at husbands like, go up there, go up there. <laughs> so it was like, it was like, you know, you ain't been to church in a while, or you know, you maybe have slid away from your commitment to Christ, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Come on down because you backslid. We were getting ready to leave, and my granny said to me, she was like, well, Bishop called for the backsliders, but you were asleep, so I didn't want to wake you up. Damn. Oh, God. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lord, she called you out. She called, She more than called me out. Called she kept it real. She, and the name is G-O-D. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Um, just talking about like my, bad, my, my saved experience. I went to church camp, and... It was like a week long, you know, Monday through Friday. And it was fun. We swim in the pool. I get sunburned. We do like, you know, like games and shit. We'll play, play soccer, like dodgeball, all that. And so it was the last night. And it was like the really emotional night where people were going up and get saved. And I was just bawling. <laughs> I was bawling. And everyone was like, he's really touched by the Holy Spirit. You know I, I was so homes- I was homesick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> I miss my mom in my bed and... <laughs> So we, we didn't have a church camp, but we did have a youth revival, and youth revival was just like yours. It was a week long, but it was a week long of like probably like 15 to 20 different churches. It was kind of like a competition so for the youth, so there's they had different type of things that were going on during the week, so we would have like a trivia competition, and they had like a, a orator, oratorical review. Or something. It was like you had to get up and give a speech about a particular topic. They had a debate topic. That but they it was did. about religion topic. But right? it was about yeah. religion, yeah. And then they had we had a T-shirt competition, and then they also did it for the adults. And then at the end of the conference, that they would tally up all the points, and then if you're the top three churches got like trophies or something. That um, sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like school. Yeah, I mean, because they, it, it was a lot, and they would like force the youth to like be involved. Yeah. Like, you're doing this this year, you need to get prepared, because they would give you months to prepare. This conference was like a huge conference, and um, it was a lot, but it was also really fun. You got to meet different kids from different churches, and everybody had different t-shirts that represented their church, and they had a march around the neighborhood, mm-hmm. wherever it was being hosted that year. So it was always fun. That so, sounds like, really fun. What was the best at? I feel like you would be good at like t-shirt making. Oh no, I was <laughs> I was I was good at trivia. Like they gave us a packet full of like a hundred different questions based on the Bible and religious stuff. <laughs> You're and like, who is Moses? Yeah, they give us buzzers, <laughs> and then you have to buzz in and get the the correct answer. We always did really well at the at the competition. We always walked around walked away with a trophy for something. So did yeah. y'all have to go to vacation Bible school? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Vacation Bible that? School was a thing. Oh, yeah. Vacation Bible School. It was like just basically an excuse for your parents to drop you off. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It was during the summertime, so your mom didn't have to take care of you during the day. Mm-hmm. But it was cool for us when we had to go because our church had a our family life center. So we had a, it was a bowling alley in there. Of course, like a gym was in there. What we the had a heck? track in there. What is going on? What kind of church, church is this? Mega <laughs> church. These mega churches. They got money. Yeah. They got I love money. Baptist Who's your preacher? Never. Joel Osteen? <laughs> Joel no, he, he's passed away now. He actually Eddie was Long? Wow. <laughs> what did you say? That was Atlanta. Sorry. That wow. was Atlanta. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Bishop T.D. Jakes. That's probably the church you would have went to. <laughs> it was down the street. I lived down the street. <laughs> <laughs> would you all ever get married in a church? Um, maybe a, a Buddhist church with Tony. <laughs> I don't think they have churches. I don't think that works that way. But they have temples. Like temples. Oh, temples. temples yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that'd be fire. They're not letting yeah. no gay but I drink. in the temple. But I drink. <laughs> no, they wouldn't care about it. They're, they're not anti. Oh, really? Gay. That's all I think about. It. It's yeah. not the read up on it. I, don't I, don't, I hope y'all fact check that before. No, I, I will. I will. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm still. I'm not deciding anything. Just that's something I want to look into. So. Okay. Quick my pivot. Pivot. Yeah. Am I the only one here who's seen Noah's Ark? Noah's no, Ark. That's the, the gay yeah. characters. Yeah, I've seen it. Part some of it. No, why is it good? Does yeah, it have anything to do with the Bible? That scene, Noah's Ark. You, you and I haven't it. finished it, <laughs> but you made me watch it. I you? made you watch the first season. You watch finish the second season. Yeah, yeah. Like, we didn't finish the second. Yes, season. we did. did we? Yeah. Okay. Well, you get the reference I'm talking about. Oh, we didn't watch okay. the the YouTube special. That they oh, did. okay. That's did what... we watch the movie? No. Yeah, we watched oh the movie. Yeah. Okay, right, they got YouTube you watch it, right? movies. <laughs> I don't know if I can yeah, keep Yeah, they up. did like a COVID special. But what was your point? I'm there's a, uh, there, so there's a scene where <clears throat> Doug Spearman, who plays Chance, oh, yeah. is, uh, wanted to get married. And he tells the pastor, we want to get married. And he was like, well, who's the lucky bride? And he's mm-hmm. like, well, he's sitting right here. <laughs> and so Alec is like, we can argue with these people till the cows come home. They ain't letting y'all have no gay marriage in this church. So I was like, word. But then they, they got married in the church. Didn't they? No, they did not get married in the church. <laughs> oh Y'all need to be watching it, man. <laughs> it was, it's been that was the YouTube special. They did, not, <laughs> they did not get married in the church. I just got to say, like, I don't know how much more my parents would cry if I told them I was gay <laughs> or Buddhist. I feel like they would cry more. Wait, your folks don't know you're gay? What? Your folks don't know you're gay? Oh, no, but they cried. I'm just wondering if I like. Oh, yes, okay. Of, yeah, yeah. No, they cried a lot. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> They're still crying it. somewhere. <laughs> That's an interesting point because I don't know if my parents would like be okay with it. I mean, I grew up in a Baptist church that's like heavily religious, so I don't know if they would be okay with having a gay wedding there. But honestly, I don't need to have a wedding in general. Um, I just want the ceremony, like a reception. Because wedding is for everybody else. Yeah, to I like agree. to yeah. celebrate our relationship, and that that's what I'm more, you know, concerned about. Not the actual ceremony. I'm okay with having something personal and intimate, yeah. Yeah. not like you know something. Okay. So I'm okay with it not being yes. in the church. What do you want to have? Same. I I don't want, I don't want it in the church. I just I just don't want it in the church because I feel like. Uh, it, and this may be my own personal bias in my, you know, my own opinion. I just feel like mm, that that kind of gives even more room for some people to be on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And especially people who you probably didn't even want to invite to be in the first place. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To be honest. So it's like, and I know I, I've had this, I haven't had this conversation with my grandma, but I truly feel like that she would not come. Like yeah. she truly just would not come. That's she amazing. loves me, you know. She, I know she loves me. She, you know, she shows that she loves me. But I think just certain stuff is just too much for her, and I feel mm. like she does be one of them things. Where she's like, mm. does she know? But she, she, listen. <laughs> much from from probably about so, I, my mom made me come out when I was seventeen. That's a conversation for another day. Major. But um, from maybe I'll say seventeen to. 26 almost every conversation i ever had with my grandma was about me being gay and i just had to come to a point and say listen if, if this is the relationship that we're going to have as to where you just trying to find out or where you just acting like oh now you find out i'm gay or if you don't have anything else interested in me as me you being your grandson i don't want to talk to you no more mm-hmm. i don't want to talk to you no more this ship is sailed mm-hmm. y'all know i'm gay y'all met a boyfriend of mine I, it, it's not a phase mm-hmm. It's not a phase, so just let it go. And after that, you know, she just... Now I won't say she came around, but she changed the topics of the conversation that we would have. 
I had a uh, similar experience with my mom, actually. So I came out at probably like 19. Mm-hmm. It wasn't planned. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And uh, long story short, when I came out, I didn't talk to my family for like probably six months because I was living with a guy, long story. But um, my mom, like every 90 days, she would always come to me and talk about me being gay. And it was always the same conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, God doesn't like it. You're going to go to hell. And I think it it lasts for for about a year. And I finally just said, you know what? If you want to discuss it, I'm fine with that. But if you just want to remind me that God doesn't like it and give the same conversation, I'm not going to have it anymore. And just like you, Memphis, it's like it stopped. And it changed everything because it was like, and I told her, like, I don't mind discussing it. We can talk about it all day. Like, you know, I want you to learn about it, get comfortable. But if you just want to remind me I'm going to hell, then I've heard that over and over. I've heard it from you. I've heard it on TV. I've heard it everywhere. So I kind of had a similar experience with that. I, wow. I think for me, like, that's why I waited so long to even come out. <laughs> I waited till I was 30 to come out to my parents and tell them that I was gay. Um, and it was just kind of, I don't know. I think it kind of took a lot of it, you know, their concerns away. Like, I didn't get that. I didn't get the whole, like, you're going to hell thing. We don't love you. You need to repent. Like, I didn't get any of that. And I'm very blessed because I know a lot of people out there don't share that same experience that I have. Um, I was very scared to tell my parents because of how heavily religious my family is. I was very scared to tell them about my lifestyle and that I have a boyfriend and I would have never thought that I would be bringing somebody home to meet my parents. Like, never. And them being so accepting in the way that they were was great for me. But it's never something that I thought. I thought that they were going to tell me I had to pray it away and they weren't going to accept me. I think that's why I waited so long to say something. Just because it was like, I'm an adult now. So, yeah, and it's honestly, like, I the, pay my own bills. Mm-hmm. So, what you going to say? Well, the I feel like the churches, not all churches, but they're, they've relaxed their kind of views. Where it's not like the main topic of conversation anymore. It's all like, love the sinner, hate the sin type no, shit. I don't know what church you're looking at. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it doesn't seem, I mean, I haven't been to church in, like, what, 15 years? <laughs> it just seems like it's, like, kind of relaxed a little bit. I don't know. Why do you think your parents are so cool about well, that? Well, I don't know. Let me try. Because they I, love me, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, what I think is, okay, so you, I'm not sure what age you finally told them or came out at, but I think what it is is they've seen you as an adult. They've seen you live your life and be, you know, responsible, do the right thing. And they've seen you manage yourself and not have to be unreliable. I think that's the one. I don't want to say benefit of coming out later in life because it's unfortunate because you have to hide yourself. Yeah. But they've probably seen you go from this. Again, I came out at 19. Memphis came out at 17. Mm -hmm. At that age, I think without knowing your story, my mom was thinking, did somebody influence you? Did somebody do this yeah. to you? Did something happen to you? It's always thinking it because you're so young that your mind isn't developed. My mom to this day still says, well, you're still young. You don't know anything. I'm like, I'm 30. I'm almost 40. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. It's, 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 you know <laughs> but you coming out at your age, it's like, yeah. at that point, they're not looking at you as a kid. I mean, they probably still are, but you're not a child. You've made good decisions. You've moved. You've got a good job. Your car. you got a partner. Your life is more in, in developed, so they're not looking at you as this kid that's like, influence and doing shit because someone told you to do it so i think that's the one thing that maybe and it's kind of like they kind of had time to prepare themselves like i've never brought a woman home they know know. they know i feel like they they had to know (laughs) and you gave them a whirlwind i'm gay i've got a boyfriend and you're going to meet him next christmas wow you just said you didn't you didn't give him a chance to like react anyway but like they were like i guess this guy named Memphis is coming. They were so accepting of it. I was like, okay, well, we should just do it. And I kind of got cold feet towards the, you know, as it got closer. I was like, are you sure you you want to go with me? Like, you know, just because it's kind of kind of nervous. Now, my dad did say, he was like, look, <laughs> Don't be doing no you, can, you can bring, you know, your friend with you or, you know, whatever. But where y'all staying? Where y'all staying? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. That's better, time. though. I don't want to stay with y'all. No, but it's still, like, it kind of would have been awkward to just be, you know, Like, sane, yeah. You know. As opposed to my mama, who's known I've been gay forever. If y'all need to stay here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wait. So My family, twist. like I said, in the, in the beginning... 
as, as as Antonio said, when I when I first came out, it was I mean World War Seven. Mm-hmm. It, it was bad. Mm-hmm. Like my mom and I didn't talk for a very long time, and I think it was you know I'm the oldest of my siblings on my mom's side, so it's like she don't understand. Yeah, I'm 17. Hell, I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? But I, I had this this friend in high school who was just openly gay and so confident, and his mama loved him, and it was like you can be who you are. Mm-hmm. So like fuck it, I can be who I am. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And initially, that wasn't a response from my family. It was, this is wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't know where you got this from, who you picked this up from, yeah. who you been hanging out with. Yeah. Like you said, t- this I'm happy to you. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Let us know. And I'm like, no, I've I, I've I've come to terms with who I am. I had a girlfriend in eighth grade. Y'all ain't seen me no female since then. <laughs> I'm a senior in high school. <laughs> That's definitely when you bring your people home. Yeah. As a senior in high school, so it's like I y'all kinda knew. You know what I'm saying? Y'all kinda knew. So it's it, but over the years our relationship just got gradually and gradually better because I don't know, maybe because I'm I'm so headstrong about certain things where it's like I'm not gonna allow you to treat me a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is the thing that's non negotiable. Like like Tony said with his mom, we're we're not gonna keep doing this. If you want to discuss and have a conversation about who I am and, and what I am and everything about that, perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? You open and listen. We can have a discussion. But keep telling me this is a phase. We can pray this away. Let me get the past involved. Yeah. Don't tell that man to come over here. <laughs> Do not tell that man to come over here. Because what's going to happen is everybody ain't going to get cussed out and I'm going to leave. <laughs> and, and God rest my granddaddy's soul. And I miss him so much because, you know, I told him and he was like, you want a beer? And that was that. <laughs> Wow. That was that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I miss them to this. But yeah, we, we're at a point now where my family is extremely receptive. Uh, my family here loves them. Loves them. Even when I told them, uh, my cousin James was like, uh, why y'all didn't come hang out? And I was like, well, we was playing this stuff for Dom's birthday. He's like, why you didn't tell us we would have came? Oh. You know, so so my family really, they really enjoy Dom. And, and it's a good thing. So yeah, church, they... mm, but religion <laughs> right. and God, absolutely. Yeah. And they've been very accepting of me as well. Everybody's been really nice, for sure. Any other thoughts on religion, guys? Uh, we need to get Antonio saved. <laughs> oh, yeah. And okay. baptized. Can you and make it happen with I got you. limited household product and water? What What's the biggest tub we can use? I got a bathtub. Clorox or something like that. No, I'm good. <laughs> no I'm good. we'll just pull you a bath water. I'm, I'm okay. We'll do it in the shower. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I got Epsom salt. I'm okay. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, I go to the spa. That's like getting saved, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> spa? What no. spa are you going to? Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't right. think it's your Damn spa. Damn sure no, if you're going to. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, we know you're going. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no saving going on. You're washing one in feet. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm getting uh, saved by eucalyptus and chemicals. Mm, 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 nah, you ain't going to okay. get that. That ain't, mm, 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 that, ain't, that ain't the way to Christ. Depends. <laughs> 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 We're going to sing the song for you, too. Put, <laughs> matter of fact, put the song in the episode when you edit it. Please don't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I can find it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, a huge celebration for the podcast. Just want to put out there that we have over 100 independent <laughs> listeners to this podcast, which is insane to think about. Thank you guys for listening to our podcast. Like I said, a fu- a, like two episodes ago... Um, I ask for people to email us or send us messages for, you know, a random question that has nothing to do with the topic and we would just answer it. So my girl Mackenzie sent us a question she wanted us to, to ask. Just, hey, Mackenzie. Hey, Mackenzie. Hey, Mac. Um, so her question for us is, which Kardashian is about the about most Kate. interesting to look at and why? Um, I think that Kendall is because she doesn't look like all of them. She's had work done, but like she's like interesting because it's she's different, right? She's not like fake. That's my vote. I think um, I like Courtney. Courtney's the only one that that hasn't been on any black dick, and um, she's. I think her personality is a lot like mine. Like, she's kind of, like, nonchalant, kind of, like, straight to the point. Like, she doesn't really care about all the, the hoop and holler of being famous or anything like that. So, yeah, I think Courtney is the most interesting. Um, I don't know what half of them look like or how many exist, so I don't have an answer, so I'm just going to pass it You don't know me. what Kim Kardashian looks like? I mean, yeah, but I don't know the other. How many are there? Like, there are five. Yeah. I thought it was, like, three. 
Wow. No, those, are the, those, those are the three oldest. Kim, yeah. Courtney. No, you're technically right. There's only three Chloe. Kardashians. There's two Chloe. Jenners. But them Kardashian yeah, Jenners. Look, you better be a fan. Okay, <laughs> great. Yo, I mean, it's like. Yeah. But then Chloe oh. have like a bunch of surgery. Like she's at like eight twenty. They all have. They all have. So yeah, I, I'm gonna skip. I, I I legit just I don't see them. I don't watch the show or see them. So I'm gonna skip because I don't have an answer. <sighs> Whatever, Antonio. Memphis. <laughs> um, I'm with you. Courtney is my favorite. Uh, just because she still has her natural look. I don't know if she's been at a knife. I'm certain she probably has. Probably. But she still has her natural look, and then also. Personality wise, she just she gonna be with the bullshit, and I'm I'm with it too. And my favorite one, she had smack camera to that wall and make she up did. Wait, what right, happened? Bitch, don't don't play did. with it. It was a fun. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, they, they I watch that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll say this too, as a person who is not a member of this podcast but listens to the podcast, it's a really good podcast. It's a really good podcast. You guys talk about some really interesting topics and make you really think. So I'm, I'm happy for y'all. To your credit, I think this is our best step yet. We had the laughs. We talked about deep. So I don't think we've ever gotten this deep. So you're a natural kid. Thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on and, and be another guest on our podcast. We would love to have you back. I appreciate it. If you decide to come back. If he doesn't eat your beast for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks everyone um, for listening to this episode again. Until next time. Bye.